Psalm chapter 63, beginning in verse 1. O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. Amen. Lord, we just ask you this morning, God, that you would just anoint us mightily of your spirit, O oh God. Lord, just let there be a hunger, God, that would just well up in our hearts and our souls for you, Lord, that you could satisfy it, O oh God, and that we would find everything that we need in you, Lord Jesus. And God, I pray, God, you would speak to every heart, minister to every soul and mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Lord bless you this morning. In this psalm, David is talking about the time he spent in the wilderness of Judah. He was hiding and running for his life. It was a dry, thirsty land where there was no water readily available. He says that is how his soul was feeling. Dry and thirsty, longing for God. He remembers how he experienced God's power and glory in the sanctuary, where the presence of God sprung up and flowed freely. But he wasn't there anymore. And he didn't have access to God's dwelling place right at that time. He was separated. He was apart. He was isolated. Just waiting and longing for the time he would enter into God's presence again. That to me in a way describes this time of isolation, separation, and confinement that we have been going through. Is anyone thirsty and longing for the free-flowing presence of the Lord? Amen. I hope you are. Yes. In the arid climate of the Middle East, sources of water, especially good spring water, were highly valued. When found, these places of spring water were made into wells or fountains that provided refreshing water to the inhabitants around them. And towns and communities would be born or form around that place of available refreshing water. If it was especially good water, like an artesian well, people would boast about their water. And people from all around would come to drink from it. I remember when I was a boy, we would walk quite a ways actually from where I live, this place which is now a state park. And there was this continually flowing spring there. And that water was like cold, cold, cold. But we would love to drink from that spring water there, especially after being on a hot, long walk in the summer. You know, it was just so fresh and we loved that place. That was one place when we went to that park, we always went to that spring. It was, it was, you know, great. I, I can think about, you know, in a similar manner, the people back in the Bible times in the Middle East, you know, when they found that kind of water, they would just long to get to that place. They would long to drink from that refreshing water. You know, there was a time when David was confined restricted. The Bible says in the hole. And the Bible says with the Philistines garrison then at Bethlehem. And during this time it says, David longed and said, Oh, that one would give me a drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem that is at the gate. I can imagine that hometown water that he was raised on and used to must have been awful good. 
and refresh it. Because three of his soldiers actually risked their lives to break through the Philistines' garrison to go and get and bring him back some of that water. He said, oh, that I had some of that water that I used to drink back in Bethlehem. You know, that's how we ought to feel about the presence of the Lord. Amen. That's how we ought to feel about the times that we have come together to worship in church and God has moved so mightily among us. Yes. And we have felt that refreshing, flowing presence of God. We ought to feel in ourselves, oh, I want to get back to that again. I want to feel that presence of God, yes. that refreshing water of God's presence. Yes. Oh, that one would give me a drink of that again. I mean, there's some towns with bad water. There's some towns with fair water. But then there are some towns with great water. And if you could find a place like that with great water, obviously that is a place you would probably want to settle down and live. The city of God was one of those places that the Bible mentions as a place you should love to dwell. Psalm 87 says, The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Judah. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God, and of Zion it shall be said, This and that man was born in her, and the highest himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he writeth up the people that this man was born there, Selah. As well the singers as the players on instruments shall be there. All my springs are in thee. Notice it was to be noted, maybe even envied, that you was one of them that was born there. In the city of God. It was a glorious place that God established. It wasn't going anywhere. It was going to stay. Amen. And then the writer says, all my springs are in thee. That's the title of my message this morning. All my springs are in thee. What do you mean by that? Well, the word for springs here obviously does mean a spring or a well or a fountain you know it must have been a place of great water it might have been a great place just to live you know the best place to live from a physical standpoint but more importantly was the spiritual side of things because first of all that was the city of God That's what it said, right? That's the place where he dwelt. That's the place he looked over. That's the place that he kept. That's the place he established, the Bible says. That's the place he loved. And glorious things were spoken of him, it says. It was a spiritual mm -hmm. thing more than a physical thing. Mm -hmm. And figuratively, figuratively speaking, that word for spring could actually also mean a source particularly of satisfaction, a source. So it could be a source of satisfaction. So above yes. all else, see, God is the source of all that we need. He made everything and he created everything. Right. He knows what we need to operate and he knows what we need to have real joy. He is the source of satisfaction that we need in life. His presence alone can satisfy the longing of our souls. Every other source will fail to satisfy folk. Yes. God is the source. All my springs are the thing. He's the source of satisfaction. He's the source of everything we need. He's the source of everything that we need to have. But you know, some people wander, especially in times of testing. And they're allured by popularity, 
promises of things in this world and many things, and they try to find satisfaction there. Jeremiah chapter 2 describes how the people of God did this. And so he asks, God asks, what fault did your ancestors find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravines, a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruit and rich produce. And then he says, my people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold. You know, it's sad when people forget all about what God brought them through. Mm -hmm. How good he had been to them. And how he satisfied their souls in the past. And how real he was to them. But then they just seemed to forget it. They just wander away. And then they try to create another source of water, you see. Another source of water to satisfy themselves. That's compared to cistern water here. Well, what's a cistern? Well, a cistern is a man-made pit of sorts. We would liken it to maybe like a, some kind of tank in the ground. You put it down in the ground. It collects runoff water after it rains. And I've seen these in the Middle East for myself. I've actually been to a farm where they had a cistern in the Middle East. These are not good sources of water. Not at all. First of all, you're waiting on it to rain on a rather arid environment. So it doesn't rain very often. And then when it does rain, that runoff water flows across the ground. And you can, uh, I want you just to picture this now. It also sweeps in all with it dirt, grit, you know, dead plant materials, and manure from animals that like hang around that well. Again, I've seen that for myself. So I know what was in that water. And then that water sits in that pit and stagnates as it waits for you to draw it up. And again, because water is pretty scarce and it don't rain very often, you might be relying on that water for a long time, so that water can be down there stagnating for an awful long time. I'll tell you, especially by the time you get down to the bottom, so to speak. And that's what people would rather have than fresh flowing spring water. That's what God was saying. He said, what's the matter with y'all? The Bible says, that that's what it's like to forsake God, to stray from Him, and stop seeking and looking for Him for what you need. And instead, looking and following after this world as your source and what it has to offer for satisfaction. He says, that's what you're like. When you leave me, the fountain of living water, and you turn to the world, to other gods, He says, do you all? You like storing your store your water in a cistern, old, ugly, stagnant, dirty water. But I'm the source. I'm the fountain of living water. I'm the spring. I'm that spring water that continually flows. You know, we read earlier where the psalmist said that all my springs are in me. It wasn't just for some religious fix that he needed on Sunday morning. It wasn't for some insurance plan to heaven that he would need to cash in someday in the future. It wasn't for a hotline that he could call when he was in trouble and get assistance from. You know, oh God help me. No, he said all of my springs are in thee. 
In other words, everything I need, I look to you and I find satisfaction in you, O oh God. Jesus said that the very first commandment of the very first thing that God is looking for from us is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Or as in the Jewish Bible kind of says it, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. He said that's number one. This is a scripture that tells us that we got to look to the one God. And you got to focus all of your love, all your attention, all of your strength, everything, your mind. You got to focus all of that in to one source. And that's God Himself, the one true God. You know, we can't turn to uh, multiple sources. We can turn to one source, to Him alone. That we turn to him, not to them. Amen. Which would be multiple sources. Psalm 37 also says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And so this is good advice as to how to make God your source for satisfaction. He said, trust in Him, delight in Him, and commit your ways to Him. And the Bible says, my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ can take care of every need that you have. It doesn't matter what it is. As a matter of fact, when you put it in his hand, he does so much a better job than we do. I remember, you know, I'm just reminded of the, the wedding at Cana. You know, they had done everything they could as far as the, the refreshments and the wine they needed and all that. But then they started running out. And so then they turned to Jesus. And we know the story. He turned the water into wine so that they could have what they needed for the rest of the feast. And they said, this wine at the latter end is better than that, which is the first. This is, the, you know, usually you serve the best wine first. And then, you know, the lesser one. He says, this is the best wine that we've ever had. And so when, see, when we put something in Jesus' hands, he does way a whole lot better what we could ever do. He gives us the best for our lives. Amen. Not the worst or what, what's left after the best. You know, that's what they were used to. And so, the Lord can take care of everything we need. Amen. And for the intimate recesses of our soul and spirit, the ultimate source of satisfaction, delight, and pleasure for your soul is the very presence of the Lord Himself. That's the only thing that will satisfy. Is God Himself. Not even what He can give. Not even what He can do. But it has to be Him, His very presence. That's the only thing that will satisfy the deepest longings of your heart and soul. God Himself. Jesus told a Samaritan woman that He met at a well, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. He wasn't talking, amen, or I should say he was talking about an inner spiritual thirst, an inner spiritual desire. You know, just getting satisfied by physical things like that well, things in this world 
you know, that the world can offer you, it's going to leave you constantly coming back or looking for something better that can meet your needs. You know, something more. We see that with people, for example, that get into drugs. They're always looking for something more. So they get deeper and deeper into it. That's how people get addicted and get on uh, these powerful drugs and destroy their lives. Right. But he said, the water I shall give you shall be in you. And it will be a well of springing water that will give you everlasting life. And so he was talking about the Holy Spirit. You know, and let me let me say this, not just the Spirit, but the Holy Spirit. There's many spirits in the world. The Bible talks about that also. But God's Spirit is holy. And it's going to lead us into holiness, holy ways in our lives. And so the Holy Spirit in you, which is the Spirit of Christ. When that comes in, He comes inside of us and He lives in us forever. That's the very presence of God that I was talking about that comes in to live in us. And He said it's like a well of springing water that just wells up inside. You know, in another place, Jesus called it like rivers of living waters. You know, only the Spirit of Christ dwelling and living in you will satisfy the longing of your soul. Mm -hmm. Only the Spirit of Christ will give you meaning and right. direction in your life. Right. Will make you really feel loved and give you hope of a future living forever with Him. Only the Spirit of the Lord can do that. You know, people get upset with other people because they look to other people to be the source to give them what they need. Mm -hmm. And then they get angry and upset because that person can't satisfy anything in their life. Or that person lets them down in some way. They feel like that person did me wrong. Well, you look into the wrong place. Only Jesus Christ can satisfy the deepest needs in your heart and your soul. So that's where we need to go. He is that source. He is that living, springing water. And every other source of water is something less than that. He said that, that it would be in you like water springing up in you. So it's not surprising that you, when you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, you will begin to speak, the Bible says, in other tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. Well, if it's that flowing, bubbling, rising up, springing up water, it comes out. And it comes up out of you with the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives you the utterance. Amen. And then, you know, you just need to keep, if I can say it this way, keep that pump primed and keep it that uh, spring flowing in your life. How you do that? Well, by seeking Him, by, by following Him daily, through prayer, Bible study, attending a spirit-filled church, working for Him, and let Him lead and direct your life. You've got to stay where the water is. Well, if, you want, if you wander from the water, you wander from the spring. You're not going to have access to it. And so if you've never received the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, as the Spirit gives you the utterance. And that is something that you need if you want to find God's purpose and satisfaction for your life. Before you can get it, however, the Bible says you must repent of your sins and repent of self-control of your life and surrender to Jesus Christ and give Him control of your life. You will also need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The only name under heaven, the Bible says, whereby we are saved. We get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, for the remission of all your sins. But if you truly repent and surrender to Jesus, 
I can tell you that He will fill you with His Spirit, even if you don't have the opportunity right away to that. If it's your desire to do what's right, follow after that. He will forgive you of your sins. And if you really seek Him with all your heart, He can fill you with the Holy Spirit right where you're at. Even today. And then, if all my springs are in Him, as we read, then obviously He is where I need to find true life and satisfaction in everything I do. You know, we've been going through some tough times lately. But even when things get back somewhat, I will say it that way, get somewhat back to normal, they won't be exactly the normal that we have before. We're going to have to adjust. We don't know everything the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. Yes. And so full safety and full satisfaction only comes by full surrender. A lot of times we expect a lot from God, but we don't want to give very much to God. Right. If you want full satisfaction, you've got to have full surrender. And so what I ask everyone, every one of you, everyone listening today, what I ask everyone of you to do today is to lay it all down. Lay it all down. Surrender everything to Jesus. Your rights, your expectations, your needs, your hopes, your dreams, your plans, your ambitions, your future. And put it all in the hands of Jesus. And follow His direction and His leading. Jesus said, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake in the Gospels, the same shall save it. Yes. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? You don't gain anything there, do you? And so will you surrender it all to Jesus today? Will you let him fill you or, in case of some, refill you with His Spirit and let His Spirit flow and lead and direct you in every area of your life. And you know, when you let Him have control like that, you need a living Jesus. What I mean by that, He's going to be alive in you every day. Yes. You gotta, you gotta have a flow of the spirit in your life. And so it's not a one-time deal. Amen. It's yielding and following him as the spirit works in you and through you every day. And so, please contact us so that we can help you in your spiritual journey. We can help you pray, uh, receive the Holy Ghost. We can make arrangements for you to be baptized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And uh, anything else you might need in the Lord. For more information, go to our website, spiritandtruthupc.com. God bless you. Hope to see you, not just soon, but hope to see you next Sunday. God bless you. 11 a.m. next Sunday in Jesus' name.